just get brave Take a big leap of faith Call it truth so me and you can find a better way Let's take some time, open our eyes, look and listen And we're gonna find we're more alike than we are different Judge the love quick God help us here Revolutionary oh, 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 Revolutionary oh, 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 oh. Let's get it, let's get it oh, 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 oh. Revolutionary oh, oh, oh. Turning the TV down Drowning their voices out Cause I believe that you and me Can find some common ground See, maybe I'm not like you, but I walk a mile in your shoes If it means I might see the world the way you do Let's take some time, open our eyes, look and listen And we're gonna find we're more alike than we are different What would Jesus do? He would love us, he would love us Oh, what would Jesus do? He would love us yeah, he would love us, so we should love us. Why does kindness seem revolutionary? When did we let it get so ordinary? Let's turn it around, flip the Hi, my name is Lindsay Bell Kerr and it's my joy to be with you on this Palm Sunday as we remember Jesus' triumphant arrival in Jerusalem and his passion to follow. As we enter more deeply into this time of worship, I'll invite you to become more aware of God's presence. Would you join with me in prayer? Creator God, you who loved us so much that in the fullness of time, you sent us the gift of your only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ. We give you thanks and praise for this opportunity to gather this morning and worship you. We ask you to bless us and bless us in this week to come. Give us the courage each day to follow in the steps of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen.
morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Children's Time. Today I have the pleasure of having a few people here with me in church, and so I've put them on the spot, and I'm going to ask them, what are you afraid of? Miss, Miss Bonnie is afraid of COVID. Spiders. Oh, good one. Fires. Spiders. Spiders. Kathy? Bridges and water. Okay, I have a fear of heights. Pastor Lori? Snakes. Snakes. <laughs> Mr. Mike? Acting. Acting? Speaking in public. Speaking in public, absolutely. <laughs> Sitting here on the steps. It's a fear I have every Wednesday that I've signed up for this. So, let's see. I have a story to tell. And we're going to see what these little guys are afraid of. This is called Grandpa Toad's Secrets. Emily Anderson from many, many years ago. Oh, time out. One day, Grandpa Toad and Little Toad took a walk in the forest. You know, Little Toad, said Grandpa, our world is full of hungry enemies. How can we protect ourselves, Grandpa, asked Little Toad. Well, Grandpa declared, I'm going to share my secrets with you. My first secret is to be brave. You must be brave when facing a dangerous enemy. Just then, a hungry snake appeared. Hello, toads, hissed the snake. I'm going to eat you for lunch. Little toad screamed and ran away to hide. But was Grandpa scared? Not a bit. Eat me if you can, Grandpa shouted fiercely, but I may be more than you can swallow. Grandpa sucked in the air and got bigger and bigger. Well, murmured the snake, maybe some other time. And the snake slithered away. Little Toad jumped from the bushes. Oh, Grandpa, he cried, you were so brave, you were wonderful. Grandpa Toad beamed with pleasure. Thank you, he said, but some enemies are too big to scare away. My second secret is to be smart. You must be smart when facing a dangerous enemy. Just then, a hungry snapping turtle appeared. Hello, toads, snapped the snapper. I'm going to snap you up for a snack, snap, snap. Little toad screamed and ran away to hide. But was Grandpa Toad scared? Not a bit. A snack, asked Grandpa. Wouldn't you rather have a feast? Why, sure, said the snapper. Well, Grandpa whispered, a tasty looking snake slithered by just moments ago. If you hurry, you can catch him. Gee, thanks for the tip, said the turtle, and he hurried off to hunt the snake. Little Toad jumped from the bushes. Oh, Grandpa, he cried, you were so smart, you were wonderful. Grandpa Toad beamed with pleasure. Thank you, he said. Now for my third and last secret. But before he could say another word, a humongous monster appeared. Hi, Toads, bellowed the monster. I'm going to eat you guys just for the fun of it. Little Toad screamed and ran away to hide. But was Grandpa scared? Yes, he was. He had never seen such a frightening creature in his life. He tried to run away, but the monster caught him. Little Toad hid in the bushes, shaking with fear, but he remembered his Grandpa's secrets. Be brave and be smart. Be brave and be smart. He saw some wild berries and quickly decided what to do. Little Toad threw the berries at the monster. They splatted and left red spots all over his legs. The monster didn't even notice. He was too busy making Grandpa into a toad sandwich. Little Toad stepped bravely out of the bushes. Grandpa, he yelled, let that poor monster go. What, said the monster. What, yelled Grandpa. Grandpa, said Little Toad, it's not very nice of you to go around poisoning monsters. Your poison, poison is already creeping up his legs. Soon he'll have spots all over his behind and then he'll die. Shame on you, Grandpa. The monster looked at his legs and shouted, help, help, these mean toads are poisoning me. The monster ran away as fast as he could. Grandpa and Little Toad hugged each other. Phew, sighed Grandpa, that was a close call. It sure was, said Little Toad. Well, said Grandpa, finally, you still haven't heard my third secret. What's that? asked Little Toad. 
My third secret is this, Grandpa declared, in case of emergency, be sure to have a friend you can count on. Little Toad, you were brave, you were smart, you were wonderful. Now it was Little Toad who beamed with pleasure. So today is Palm Sunday, and Jesus rode into Jerusalem, and he had to be incredibly brave, for he knew what awaited him at the end of the week. And the crowds that were there waving the palm branches and cheering him on, they had to be very brave too, for they were cheering on Jesus, not the Roman emperor. For this parade was a little bit like a protest. They were protesting Roman rule. They were protesting things that were wrong. So God gave the crowd courage and Jesus the courage to continue on through the week, even though that crowd would, at the end, turn against him. And God gives us courage every day to do the things that are hard. Hopefully, we don't have to do hard things like rescuing grandpa from being made into a sandwich. But we are called to do very hard things in our daily lives. And God gives us the courage to do that. And when we don't have enough courage, hopefully we can have a friend to help us out, family, um, our church family, lots of people to help us. But even when maybe our friends and family aren't around and God calls us to be courageous, we still aren't alone because we know God is with us to be courageous. So as we, too, at times have to make hard decisions, stand up maybe to a protest, we can do that together. And if not, we remember that we have God on our side. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the courage you give us, the courage to do the right thing, to say the right thing, to be the people you want us to be, Thank you for our friends and family who lift us up and support us when we can't find the courage to do it alone. And when we do find ourselves alone and in situations where we need so much courage, thank you for always being with us. Amen. Today's reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11, and chapter 14, verses 1 through 19. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna Hosanna in in the the highest highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Later that week, it was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, Not during the festival, for there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, A woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. 
for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after the other, Surely, Surely not, not I. I. This past week, the Council of Bishops decided once again to postpone the General Conference of the United Methodist Church. In case you don't know, our denomination has been fighting for quite some time about the full inclusion of LGBTQAI plus persons in the life of the church. I confess, I'm a little burned out on this matter, in large part because throughout this denominational fight, uh, queer people have been encouraged to build relationships with those who have what we've called a, a different theological point of view. Ostensibly, that might seem like a good idea, but I can't overstate the emotional and spiritual toll it has taken on, on queer people. I know queer people who are so bitter that they have, they have left their local congregation feeling that the United Methodist Church has betrayed them. Now, however, I wonder if in our willingness to accept homophobia as, as a, a different theological opinion, if we didn't participate in the very betrayal of ourselves. Holy Week is a story of betrayal. It's in plain sight. Jesus knows that his friends will betray him and he goes to Jerusalem anyway. So great is his love for his people. This is maybe different than the betrayals that we typically face. I don't know about you, but most of the time in my life when I am betrayed, I, I don't see it coming because I, I try to assume the, the best about people. Perhaps this is faithfulness. Honestly, most of the time, it's probably something else. When I go all in on a collaboration or a relationship with another human being, I go in with the expectation of forthrightness and honesty from the other party. So privileged am I that I expect to be treated well and for everything to just work out okay in the end. And so when, when these betrayals come, I am furious, furious, not just at the injustice, but because of the wounding of my sometimes very fragile ego. Even with the full knowledge of what is to come, Jesus is furious too. After riding into Jerusalem, he, he flips some tables, he, he smites an unsuspecting fig tree, he tells a not-so-veiled parable about evil people who, who murder the son of a vineyard owner, and, and he predicts the destruction of the temple. Jesus is so angry at hypocrisy and the fair-weathered nature of the people around him who claim to be his friends. Eight years before her death in 2014, 
Poet Maya Angelou spoke with comedian Dave Chappelle on a television show called Iconoclasts. During the program, Chappelle sees sees old photos of Angelou with the likes of, of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. And when he sees these photos, he asks her, how are you not angry? Meaning, how are you not angry about all that has been done to black people in the United States of America? It's an honest question from the comedian. If you've ever heard Chappelle's work, you know that he is a person with a lot of anger. It's anger that I don't fully understand, much like the anger of my Asian American and Pacific Islander friends with the recent revelation of the surge of hate crimes against their communities. I, I've tried to listen to their anger in these past days, knowing that I can only ever fully know my own anger. I don't presume to tell them what to do with their anger, but I know all too well what I do with mine. Too often, I allow my anger to morph into something else. Rather than, than walking in righteousness, I wander into the shadows of self-righteous indignation. I, I tamp down my anger in such a way that it festers into bitterness. In the course of the conversation, between the comedian and the poet, it is the poet Maya Angelou who has the last word. In response to Chappelle's question, she says that, of course, she is angry. She says, if you're not angry, you're either a stone or you're too sick to be angry. You should be angry, but you must not be bitter because bitterness is like cancer. It eats upon the host. It doesn't do anything to the object of its displeasure. Again and again, we need to be freed from our bitterness. And this freedom is only found in, in the ways that we can use our anger for the glory of God and the transformation of the world. It is in the turning of the tables, in the breaking of the bread, in the Garden of Gethsemane and at the foot of the cross that Jesus shows us how to use our anger to speak truth and work for justice. We follow him along the path of Holy Week every time we use our anger to write, to, to march, to vote, to speak, to dance, to be a force of good in this world. We follow Jesus on the path of Holy Week every time we trust that God can work through our anger to do something new. As Quaker and Pennsylvanian, William Penn writes, for though our Savior's passion is over, his compassion is not. In him, we find more than all we stand to lose in the world. In the way of Jesus, we find the way, the truth and life itself. And so in this Holy Week and in every week to come, let us walk in the way of Christ, trusting that again and again, God can work through our failings, our hurt, and even our betrayal to bring about the most unexpected new life. Thanks be to God. Spirit sound, rushing wind, fire of God fall within. Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. As we repent, turn from sin, revival ember, smoldering. Breath of God, fan us into flame. We need a prayer. The fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Jesus. For heart 
hearts that burn with holy fear Purified in faith and deed Refiner's fire Strengthen what remains So we the church You bear your light And lamp of flame City bright King and kingdom Come is what we pray We need a fresh wind The fragrance of heaven Pour your spirit out Pour your spirit out A holy anointing The power of your presence Pour your spirit out Pour your spirit out Pour your spirit out of heaven pour your spirit out pour your spirit out a holy anointing the power of your presence pour your spirit out pour your spirit out pour your spirit out I invite you to be still for a moment of prayer. Breath of God, we give thanks for your ever-present spirit. We rejoice in days of rest, milestone celebrations, and the blossoming of creation. You desire that we flourish and delight in the goodness of this world. You weep with us, O God, as we sorrow at the tragic loss of life at the hands of other humans. We mourn the deadly violence that has taken innocent lives in Boulder, Atlanta, and too many other places. We grieve the death of hundreds of thousands of precious humans to COVID-19. We lament the toll the pandemic has taken on so many. Hear our cries, O God. Pour your healing spirit out on all who are traumatized by violence and the loss of life. Abide with first responders who are touched by the harm experienced by those whom they serve. Pour your healing spirit out on our nation, reforming our hearts and minds, calling us to act to end such violence. Grant us courage, O oh God, to question the systems that perpetrate violence. Make us bold to confront attitudes that promote racism. Offer us vision to cease patterns that lift up the few while crushing the weak. Grant us fortitude to follow Christ even when it is difficult. 
We lift into your healing care persons living with chronic pain, mental health issues, terminal conditions, and other illnesses. Pour your spirit out upon them, granting them courage to enjoy the simple pleasures of each day and to seize the hope in knowing your love. May all who grieve be comforted by your compassionate care. Pour out your spirit upon this congregation and your church universal. Blow a fresh wind to breathe out falsehood Revive our spirits and energize us for the ministry of Christ. As we journey with Christ through this holy week, grant us courage to walk in covenant solidarity with Christ in faithfulness to your holy way. We lift our prayers in the name of Christ and unite our voices as he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are grateful for the opportunity to share this holy week with you. We invite you to continue worshiping with us on Holy Thursday on April 1st at 7 o'clock. We will hold a Zoom worship service with Christ United Methodist Church. On Easter Sunday, we will have a pre-recorded service available on our website and our YouTube channel. There will also be a 630 a.m. Sunrise Zoom service and a 10.45 a.m. Stony Point Zoom worship service led by Pastor Lindsay. We invite you to participate. You can find more information about First Church on our website. Next Saturday, April 3rd, the Outreach and Service Commission will hold a fish food drop-off you may bring your non-perishable items for distribution at the food, fish food pantry. There will be a free Easter egg treat for all donors. The youth are also collecting items for an animal shelter that day. They will be receiving dog or cat treats, newly or gently used dog and cat toys, blankets and towels, paper towels, body harnesses and collars, leashes and tennis balls to support our local animal shelters. My friends, as we walk with Jesus through this holy week, may we live with the courage, the conviction, and the compassion of Jesus, the Christ, who comes to be one with us in all our journey. May the love of God the grace of Jesus Christ and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit abide with you this day and always. Amen.